Uh, hello, this is Shankar once again, and uh, uh, in my series of what I've learned in astrology over the last 40 years and what I've learned from my father, who was a very good astrologer, respected by right from K. N. Rao to P. S. Iyer, and he was amazing. But of course, he didn't tell uh, the way he used to predict. Uh, but this is my research. Uh, this is what I have done. I've also read his books. So I will give it to the people to, you know, analyze it. Most important house which we dread is the 8th house. Now the 8th house, my view is that any planet in the 8th house becomes bad. It becomes negative for its Kaltatva. Any planet. Excepting when Saturn is alone in the 8th house or when Mars is alone in the 8th house, it becomes good. But there should be no planet in the 2nd house. If there are planets which are of the of the which are not which are inimical to the planets in the eighth house it will create a lot of problems and the problems will come if you look at your varshpal and your other issues but it has got to be tensions so a planets in eighth are never good saturn alone is good mars alone is good but there should be no planet in the second house a horoscope which does not have planets in the second and the eighth house is actually a good horoscope. No planets in second and eighth is good. Or only planets in second house with no planet in the eighth house. Having planets in eighth house and vice versa also makes a also makes an horoscope uh, average, above average, below average, depends on other things. Now eighth house has a very good relationship with the twelfth house. Now, whenever you see 8th house, you should always see the 12th house because it aspects the 12th house and it also gives issues over the 12th house. There is nothing, these charts which are made, I mean, the 9, uh, uh, the 9 which we make, uh, the, the 12 houses, the 9 planets, the 12 houses are made for our convenience and actually it is a 360 degree pi and each degree has an impact on the horoscope depending on what your horoscope is, what is the transit today and how is the year for today. So that is important and you should always see horoscopes in that way but that will only come when you do a lot of work, research and writing. Every degree in the horoscope is a 360 degree pi and every degree has an impact. Also, always also consider nakshatra. So this was my brief talk about the eleventh of the eighth house. Now also I've seen that in eighth house, when it impacts the twelfth house, it will have a. It will only impact the twelfth house if there is a friendly planet in the eleventh house. If there's a friendly planet in the eleventh house, it will let it go. It will join with us and then create problems with twelfth house. But if there's an inimical planet in the eleventh house. That is, suppose you have Saturn and there's an inimical planet, it says Surya in the 11th house. This Surya will not let Saturn go ahead and impact the 12th house. So it stops. It's like any other theory which you do that if I'm your enemy or if I'm going to attack you, a friend comes, your friend comes in between, he will help me in taking you there and creating problems. But if I'm your enemy, I will stop you. So that is what also is there. We should always consider itself. So there is a very great relationship between 8th, 11th, 8th and 12th. 11th acts as a catalyst in between, a wall in between. And then the 12th house always talks to the second house. The second house is the house of potential, which, which, you know, which, which gives you a lot of things. It is the house of dharma, it is the house of what you have done in the past uh, uh, which you will get and you have to get. So, you know, second house has important aspects which can always be talked about. Now, coming to this, let us see what Saturn does in various houses. Saturn and Rahu together is very good, Any uh, very bad, sorry, Saturn and Rahu in any this thing is very bad. Whenever Saturn is with Rahu, 
it will create uh, problems for you that's be sure about it now ketu in the fifth house and saturn in the ninth house ketu in the fifth house and saturn in the ninth house fifth and ninth talk to each other it is a very good for progeny it is also good for general prosperity saturn in the ninth house or tenth house let's say and mars in the fourth house very bad it will create a lot of problems in life the horoscope is below average i mean you know irrespective of anything anything here i'm talking about houses only now that's very important now saturn in the first house and if you have mercury in the sixth or seventh house i mean mercury in the sixth or seventh house you would get a wife who's very rich the reasons for it you'll get a wife and you will get a family of the in-laws will also be doing doing well saturn in the 10th house with mercury in the 9th house is also very good saturn and both the shani and both are very good friends and they create very big raj yogas when especially when it is in the 10th house especially for money it gives you a, a lot of good things now in chandrama i mean uh, you have moon in the first house you have saturn in the 10th house and mercury in the 4th house that is these are the uh, when i'm talking about these are the these are the main i mean 1 4 7 10 this is the quadrants which we call if you have moon in the first house saturn in the 10th house and mercury in the fourth house it's a top horoscope it's a horoscope which will give you a lot of money so you have to see how the planets interact with each other i have also explained you the relationships that when a planet is in the third house and there's a planet in the fifth house the fifth house takes help from the third house so if and then it looks at the ninth house so if there are inimical planets in the third and fifth house it will create problems for your bhagya which is important which is ninth house so in my next uh, this thing i will talk about maybe ninth house and how to look at the ninth house so that 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 is very critical you should always understand saturn and mercury together are always good because you know they have the same uh, this thing saturn is a very important planet and i leave it with a thought saturn is like a snake one part of it is rahu and one part of it is ketu so saturn actually represents rahu ketu which is in a line which is the straight line so when you analyze saturn you have to analyze always analyze the two karmic planets rahu and ketu and so is it is when you analyze rahu and ketu together they become venus i mean the second house is the house where both the karmic planets sit the rahu and ketu both the karmic planets sit in the second house to give you venus you know so the world is running after venus this i will touch in my next horoscope so just coming to my mind the video is already 8 minutes and i don't think that is the span which anybody has test what i have told you and give me your comments you can always go to my site shankarstudies.com shankar with a e you can always write there give your comments I give your comments the video down below also and you would find it interesting you will find the find site interesting my books from prabhat publication and sagar are also there and every diwali i try to get a book out so this time i'm writing a very interesting book which you would all love to read thanks thank you bye for now